Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at a new cooler from Sahara Gaming, the R20 Ice Rainbow. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we're going to take a look at a new cooler from the people over at Sahara Gaming. Now, this, uh, when I say new, this is a revised edition. Those of you that have been watching the channel for a while may have noticed that I did a kind of pre-production sample of this a little while back, but this is the full retail package now. So this is the Ice Rainbow Cooler, codename R20, and it also comes in the package with the Pirate Control Box. So this is a radio frequency control box which will take care of your fan speeds and also your RGB lighting, which is included on the fan, and also can communicate with up to nine other devices at the same time, so 10 devices in total, so you can synchronize all of your fans, all of your RGB lighting, all with one nice easy pack. Now at the moment this is going to be retailing on Amazon in the UK here for about £19.99. Uh, that price is a introductory price and possibly will go up in the future. So if you want to grab one quickly, I suggest you do so before the price changes. So what is the Ice Rainbow? The Ice Rainbow effectively is a convenient and easy way of cooling down your AMD or Intel processors. This is rated up to 95 watts TDP, so that does cover most of the processors that are out there on the market. And especially for those of you that are on the sort of more budget end of the scale, this is perfect. Now essentially, this pirate control box on its own retails for around about 10 pounds. So this is putting the value of the cooler at around about 10 pounds also, which actually for a RGB cooler is fantastic value for money. So let's take a quick look at some of the specs. So uh, dimensions of it, it's a 120 cooler and the height is 58 mil. The base material is aluminium, the TDP is 95 watts and the fan size is 120 mil, also RGB, with a long life hydro bearing. The rated voltage is 12 volts uh, VDC and the fan's RPM is a maximum RPM of 1800, give or take 10% either way. Um, the MTBF is 50,000 hours and the fan noise is rated about 21 decibels. So, pretty decent specs all in all. So let's take it out of the box and see what we actually get. So we get the cooler itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a second. You get a Intel mounting ring, and you get a set of push pins to attach the Intel mounting ring to your Intel motherboard. So going back to the fan, as you can see on the fan, you've got this nice big blade, with uh, an opaque characteristic to it, so that's gonna let the light shine through it. You've also got this RGB ring, which I'll hopefully be showing you in some B-roll, and also we'll plug it in shortly, just so you can see how it all works, the whole kit all together. I will also, at the end of the video, be doing uh, benchmarks, etc., with a Ryzen 1700X, so you can get an idea of what the cooling power is actually like on this thing. So moving back to the cooler, it's all been finished in this really nice uh, black kind of anodized look coating. On the bottom, you've got this protective coating over the base plate itself, so that all looks really nice and has been machined very nicely. And if you look very closely, you can see how each one of these individual fins is actually completely going through and has been sandwiched together on the bottom, so you're getting the maximum cooling potential there. So that's really nice to see. You've got this nice blacked out cable, and the blacked out cable has a four pin PWM connection, and also the custom six pin connection, which is connects to the Pirate Sync controller. The cable length itself, looks to be pretty decent. And yeah, you should be able to uh, attach that pretty much in any case and hide the wiring wherever you want to. So if you've got your controller maybe at the bottom of a case and it's a slightly larger case, then you've got plenty of cable in to get to the controller. Or if you've got it at the top of a case, then that's gonna be able to easily pass through to the back and then through to the bottom of a chassis. So no problems at all with the wiring. That is a problem with some of the fans I've noticed recently. The wiring seems to be getting shorter and shorter. So if you are trying to do some sort of custom fitment or you've got an RGB controller to plug into, uh, this lead is gonna be more than long enough. Now the mounting clips on this is what, something of uh, interest. This is just your traditional kind of AM2, AM3, and AM4 push pit. So all you need to do is push on the levers to attach them over the lugs, which are standard on pretty much every AMD motherboard in the last 10, 15 years. So this is gonna be really easy to fit on pretty much any CPU. So let's move across now to the controller. So the controller itself, this is the Sahara Pirate Sync controller. You've possibly seen this before on the channel. This has been really popular, and we've used this actually in quite a few builds. So in the box, you get a RF remote controller with all the functions on there. 
You also get a pamphlet showing you what all the buttons do, nice and easy to use. Although saying that, all the buttons have got clearly laid out instructions on what they do, so you've got no problems there. But this just gives you a little bit more detail. On the back of the pamphlet, we've got connectivity for connecting up to RGB and how you connect to power, etc. And one thing of note, this does say on the instructions that it's a Molex connector, when in fact it isn't, it is now the updated SATA connector. So if you're concerned about having to use a Molex, don't worry, it's absolutely fine. So in this bit here, this is the brains of the operation. So this is the main controller. Now there's various ways of using this controller. It does connect on SATA for power, and also there's connections for up to 10 RGB devices, all again with the Sahara six pin connection. You've also got a connection for a reset button or for an RGB changing button. So if your case has got an RGB button dedicated, just a two pin connector, you can plug that in on the end. Also on the end there, you've got the connection for your motherboard pass through. So you can use this as a dedicated controller, but if you've got a motherboard which supports things like Aurora Sync, MSI, Mystic Sync, all those kinds of things, you can plug the three pin addressable RGB header into your motherboard, connect the other end into the controller, and then you can control everything through your motherboard software. So total flexibility, depending on how you want to set it up. So if you've got a motherboard, an expensive board with RGB control, you can use that if you wish. Or if you've got a board which has got no RGB whatsoever and you want to add a bit of extra bling to your system, this is perfect. So you, you can control it from the motherboard, you can control it from the remote control, and also if you wanted to, you can use the buttons on here. So you've got manual three buttons there for changing the LED speed, the mode of the LEDs, and also fan speed, high, low, medium, that kind of thing. On the back is a 3M sticky adhesive, so you can stick that into the back of your case with no worries whatsoever. And if for those of you are using gigabyte motherboards, there's an additional connector to convert the three pin RGB to the custom kind of one pin RGB for gigabyte boards. So that pretty much goes everything that we get on the box. So best thing to do is to grab a test power supply and we'll connect all this up and we'll go through some of the RGB modes. Okay, so we've got the power supply connected up and all our electrics connected up. So I just wanted to go quickly through the connectivity. So we've got the SATA connection, which is going straight to our power supply, which is uh, hidden behind here. This goes straight into the control box, as you can see. Then one of the RGB connections is coming straight off the control box into the fan. And we've also got our pass-through connectors, which I've connected up, but obviously we haven't got a motherboard to control it from. But that then goes to the four pin PWM and your three pin addressable RGB. So that is your motherboard control so you can run it off separately if you wish to. But like I said before, you don't need to because you've got this handy remote control. So first of all, we'll press the on off button and power it on. And straight away, you can see we've got the RGB ring illuminated, which looks really nice. Obviously we, we haven't got the fan spinning currently because we don't have that connected to a PWM controller, but we will do later in the video. So don't worry about that. So on the controller, you've got MB sync. So if you press MB sync, turns this off and then that hands over the control to the motherboard, which again, we haven't got connected at the moment, so ignore that really. But if you want to hand it over, you can do. So press it again and it goes back to the motherboard control. Uh, you've got things like fan auto, fan plus, fan minus, etc. So those at the moment won't do anything because obviously it's controlled from the motherboard on this particular version. But if you've got the other fans connected, which are from the series, so the uh, Pirate Duo Ring or the new Typhoon 14, then that will actually control the speed of those fans independently. So you don't have to worry about your CPU fan being either underpowered or overpowered or whatever it may be. The fans control separately from the remote or obviously the PWM pass-through for that side of it. And the CPU is separate. So complete flexibility, no problems there whatsoever. So let's take a look at some of the patterns. So we've got our traditional kind of uh, unicorn puke or flow. That's on Q1, Q2 is another kind of traditional color flow, which we see on quite a lot of these um, setups. This is cycling through the colors. That's Q3. Q4 is the kind of the more traditional glow, which cycles through the colors. And again, you can speed up the LED speed pressing the LED button and you can cycle through modes. So if you want to change colors, you can go through and do that. So actually, if we go back to this one, I'll show you the actual fan speed, uh, sorry, the RGB control. So the light speed, you can speed up, slow down. 
Awesome. And there we go on full speed again. So again, lots of things you can do with it. You can set if you want to, to completely green, red or blue, whichever you choose to do. And there's also a lock button on there so you can go ahead and lock it if you wish to. So let's go through all of the various colors available. And all different cycles. Pretty much most of you have seen this kind of thing before, but it's worth going through just for those of you that possibly haven't seen a fan like this before, or an RGB setup like this before. We've got about 62 different color cycles on this and then seven different shades on top of that as well. So there's plenty of flexibility and I'm pretty sure that you'll find something which is uh, suitable for most cases. Tons and tons of options. You can go on forever trying to find uh, what works for you. And you've got the various glows, which are fade in, fade out. And again, you can go through all the individual colors in that particular fashion. And that's actually quite a fast one. So if I slow that down a little bit, you can see that a little bit better. So that's slowly going from one to the other. And again, you've got your color flow. And then we go back through to the, uh, the unicorn puke, which is pretty much my favorite. I do like that, it does look good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug in one of these additional fans. Now these aren't included in the kit, but they are optional extras. So this does work with the other Sahara fans on the market. So we're gonna take a look at the Typhoon 14, which is actually a new fan out on the market at the moment. I will be putting links to all this in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. Now, for those of you that are wondering, is it safe to plug this in whilst the rest of the system is on? Um, I've got to be honest with you, I am not entirely sure, but we are about to find out. I think that answers the question. So you can hot plug and play them. Now the Typhoon 14 fan has got rubber mountains and there's a 140 centimeter, 140 mil fan or 14 centimeters. And as you can see now, that's spun up completely already. And that is, I imagine on high speed. So let's turn the fan down. So we've got quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of airflow going through there actually. There, also you can hear that. That is gonna push a lot of air. So again, you can control this if you want to from the remote control, or you can connect it up to your motherboard and use your motherboard's PWM controls on there to uh, control it how you wish. So if I press fan auto, you can see it stops now because it's waiting for an input signal via the PWM source. But again, you can see the lighting, how it all works, and they all synchronize with each other perfectly. And there's some uh, pretty nice color cycles in there, so you can go through and choose whichever one you particularly like for your build. But overall, very nice. And again, it's a very kind of modular system. So if you wanted to just start off on the system and you've not got a lot of money, you can just start off with the cooler and the RGB controller. And then as funds are become available, you can add in a couple of the Dual Ring fans if you wanted to, or maybe the Typhoon 14. Completely flexible how you want to do it. There are other fans available in the Pirate range. Again, I'll put some links in the description so you can see all the ones that are available. But they're all at really good prices as well. So you can start off your system and build it up slowly, and it's not going to cost you an absolute fortune. So if you don't have the kind of 40, 50, 60 pounds to go and buy a complete set of fans, like the uh, set we reviewed previously, then you can just start off small and build it up as time goes on. Okay, so you've seen what the colors can do and how it all works. So the best thing to do now is to put it into a system, see how easy it is to install, and see what the cooling is actually like. Okay, so this is the motherboard setup. So we've got the Asus X370 Prime Pro. We've got a Ryzen 7 1700X in here, and we've got 32 gigs of RAM. This is all in-house in the Inwin Alice case. So nice and easy to do. And also because there's no additional fans, this is gonna give us a really good representation of how this, uh, how this little cooler from Sahara is gonna fare. So we're gonna stick it in now. We're not gonna use any thermal paste. We're gonna be using one of these thermal pads just to keep the uh, testing mythology simple and easy to do. So we're gonna pop that on, put the cooler on, and then give it a quick test. So 
So we'll put the fan header in and we'll put that into the CPU header just there. So moving around to the back, all we need to do now is to connect up this connector, which is the RGB connector. So we'll plug that into the RGB controller and that just snaps into place. So all we need to do is put some SATA power into this connector, which fortunately we've got a spare SATA connector down here. And that is pretty much it. So we're pretty much ready to fire up now. Okay, so we're back. So the CPU cooler has been installed, as you can see in the background. And just so you know, it is controlled. There we go, we've turned the lighting on and off, etc. So you can see that it is actually connected. So actually connecting the CPU wasn't actually that easy. I thought with the spring clip connectors, they would be super simple to do. And I suppose with the older AMD chips where you had the exposed spring clamps with the lever, it was a little bit easier to do. So with this one, it can be a little bit tricky. And because we've used a thermal pad rather than paste, the thermal pad did have a tendency to kind of move around a little bit, but it, uh, I've reseated it and it's absolutely fine, no problem. So it's making good contact. The CPU cooler is running at the moment. It is at 70, 71 degrees C which at the moment in the house, we've got an ambient temperature of about 24 degrees is what we've got the heat inset to. So it's actually under full load at the moment, running the CPU Z uh, stress test on all cores. And we're currently 100% on all cores and we've not got no signs of throttling. The fan at the moment is ramped up to its highest setting and it's registering as the RPM is around 1900 RPM. So a little bit higher than the 1800 rated, but they do say it's within 10% difference. So uh, that's easy within margins. It idled the CPU looking about 35 degrees, which again, it's about 10, 11 degrees over ambient. So perfectly happy with that. This is a 95 watt part and this cooler is rated to a maximum of 95 watts TDP. So for me personally, I would say this is having no uh, other cooling other than the cooler itself. So it's completely ambient temperature, it's an open air rig. So if there was additional cooling in there being forced cooler air in, that would drop a little bit, I would presume, obviously, Conversely, if you've got a case which has got very minimal airflow, this is gonna get pretty hot pretty quickly. So for me personally, I would say that this cooler is more suited towards your 65 watt parts rather than 95 watt parts. I think that is really pushing the envelope of what is possible out of what is effectively a 10 pound cooler. But having said that, with the lovely RGB control, the flexibility of adding the extra fans, etc., etc., this is actually a really good value for money. And I'm really excited to actually go through. We've got a new case coming from Sahara Gaming, which we're gonna put a load of fans in, including all this and all this setup. So stay tuned to see how that all goes. But for me to uh, kind of sum this video up, the fitting process was relatively painless. The RGB controller, no problems whatsoever. Very, very easy to connect, very easy to sort of manipulate and use and connect up all that kind of stuff. But I would say if you're looking at 95 watt parts, then I would suggest maybe upping your game a bit with a bit of a stronger cooler. But for those of you on kind of lower end processors, Ryzen 3s, Ryzen 5s, um, any of your 65 watt parts, even kind of 300 Gs, 2200 Gs, those kind of things, this is gonna be absolutely fantastic and it's gonna give you a certain amount of bling to your build. So there we go, this has been the R20 from Sahara Gaming. I've been Mike, this is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.